We got about like a minute. Radio click on radio. Yep. Oh, uh, water I know he did. Why don't you do it? You could? Yeah. Oh, my God. One minute. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have to do no, I got that. No, I got that. Push it. But when I was going to go when you got charged, that's why I know it. What you want to do? Push on. Push on. Yeah, I might say, look up. I feel like. I'm saying, you're running. Welcome back to today's Sunday 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 Isaiah Villaforte and Omari Glover. Coach, comments? Uh, you know, proud of them. You know, we had to lock in the guard. Uh, to hold a team like that, that shoot the ball the way they do, the 48 points was pretty good. Um, you know, I knew we knew it was going to be tough. I, I thought they'd shoot better than they did yesterday, the other day, and they shot it They shot it well today. Um, but we made the plays when we needed to. It's a state tournament game. You're not going to always be sharp, but you got to make plays when you have to, and we made plays when we needed to. Questions from the media? Um, for the most of the first half, they were pretty close. I mean, they were trailing, but they, they kept it close. Do you think that was more of a testament to um, their scrappiness or maybe fatigue? No, that no, it was a testament to them making shots. I think they were five for nine maybe or something like that from three in the first half or whatever it was. I mean, you shoot like that, you're going to stay in a basketball game. I mean, they, you know, they got clean looks. We, we had a couple – I mean, the game could have changed a couple of times. We had a couple 50-50 balls we didn't come up with, and they made threes off of those. Um, and I think we did a better job in the second half of coming up with the loose ones so they didn't get those loose threes. I think they scored nine points in that first half off loose balls where they got three points, and that hurt, that hurt us in the first half. Right here? No, it just, just felt like one of those games that was a grind. Yeah. How much do you think, you know, having the experience you guys had were able to find a way to kind of hit the finish line and ultimately pull away? No, we didn't panic. You know, didn't panic. Just made plays. Um, got the ball around the rim late when we needed to. Made free throws. Uh, they've been here before. They they know what it takes. Uh, you know, it get they made a little run and cut it under ten, and we we responded again. Uh, and that you know, it's just going at it's it's just having a, a veteran group um, that's won a lot of basketball games. Last year you played in the semifinal. This year you played in the first one. Will you? I'm sorry. Will you try to give your get your kids away from the arena today, knowing you're coming back so early tomorrow morning? Right, yeah, they don't need to come back tonight. You know, we, I can watch that online. We'll we'll get some food and rest, stay off our feet. Um, they've been in the arena for us, so it's not like we got to get them in here and just get them in the arena. They've been here, so we're gonna go back and relax, watch some film, and just get ready for get ready for tomorrow. You got to really get ready for two games, even though you you know you got to prepare for two games at once. Not knowing if you're gonna make it to the second one, but you got to be prepared for two games. Uh, so I think we'll, we'll go back and relax and, and let them get some cold, get in the cold tub, and watch a little TV and feed them, and and, and just enjoy enjoy another win. Uh, Coach Chappelle today had a uh, two uh, twenty points, ten rebounds, eight of ten from the free throw line. Uh -huh. Was there um was there a matchup there that was real favorable, or was he just having the hot hand? Well, one, he's a really good basketball player. But two, we saw in that zone. 
um, that that middle was wide open. We we saw that that middle would be wide open, so we wanted to put him there and let him just go play one on one against those middle guys. And then he get a great. We also told him when the shots goes up, you'll be able to offensive rebound against the zone because they're not boxing out there. Um, so yeah, it was something we had a little saw on film. Uh, you know, then when Cade made a couple, and then they started staying a little farther out with Cade and IV, it really opened that middle up. So we were really able to take advantage of the middle, and a lot of times he dumped it down as well for a layup. Uh, so that's that's where we thought the weakness would be, and he did a good job of, of executing what we wanted to do. Right here, right. Coach, how much have you seen of Woodford, and what concerns you about him? Um, we've seen a bunch. Of, you know, that's in the king of the bluegrass. Uh, I've, I've been, I've seen them a bunch. Uh, they're playing well, you know, but they're they're athletic. They, they're taking care of the ball. They're, I mean, from looking at scores, they're playing a little bit slower. Um, you know, we, we just got to go play and make some shots. Uh, I think we can match up with them. They match up with us. We match up with them. It's going to be who's making shots tomorrow. It's going to be whoever's making shots and whoever's taking care of the basketball and whoever rebounds. You know, it's a, basketball's real easy. You know, if we do those things, we'll, we'll be okay. For any of the players, you're now one game away from getting back to that state championship game. What's it mean to, first of all, get to this last day and know, you know, you, you've put yourself into this position to try to get back to that state title game? Oh, I mean, it means a lot. I mean, it took a lot to get here, but we've been here before, so uh, we just take one game at a time and they're going from there. Uh, we know what we can do uh, inside our locker room and what our team can do, and we just want to get back to where we was and even have a better outcome than we did last season. Isaiah, Isaiah, for you personally, uh, your game against uh, George Rogers Clark last year. Now you're going to be back, you know, to the semis at least. Um, tell me what you're feeling. Uh, I'm feeling good. I mean, that that game's in the past to me. I really don't think about it too much. I mean, it's only uh, what's ahead and not behind you at the end of the day. Right here. So that custom made towel you got it. What's what's the story behind that? Is that your inner Jerry Tarkanian or no, what? You know what? I mean, I sweat. You know, so I, I've kept one with me for ten years now. Uh, I keep that, and you know, that head sweats. And luckily, it's cool in here, so I'm not that bad. But I sweat, so I keep that towel with me. Uh, you know, and I saw my district games. There's a packed house, man. I I get through, and this just jacket's wet, so I keep my towel with me though for my hands and my head. Hey, they make me nervous sometimes, too. So, you know, they do something crazy, and I'm like, well, what are we doing? So I need to tie out to kind of get some of that frustration out. What are we doing? Any final questions? Oh. Coach Unsell, congratulations to you and the Warren Central Dragons. Uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Let's watch your steps there, guys. We have the Ashland Blazer Tomcats, <coughs> head coach Ryan Bonner, student athletes Xander Carter, Reese DeBoard, and Nate Frazy. Freeze. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Let me connect that. Nate Freeze. Coach comments, please. Um, obviously matched up against a very, very, very talented uh, and together group in Warren Central. Um, I thought we hung in there uh, essentially for four quarters. They they stretched it late, just had too many empty uh, empty possessions, too many consecutive empty possessions against them. And with a team that's that, that's that good and that talented, when you have too many empty possessions, they're going to make you pay. Um, and uh, you know, I, they're in my, in my opinion, they're the best team here. Uh, they're the best team I've seen on film all year. They've got all the components and all the pieces to make a run at this. Uh, so my hat's off to them. Uh, they're extremely athletic, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I hope they make a run at it. Coach, Chris Pullen, My Town TV. Uh, you took over this team two weeks before the season started. Mm -hmm. you, know, you had a team that uh, looked at you in that first day and didn't know if you could trust each other. What does it mean to you to be able to make it this far into the elite eight of the, of the sweet 16 
with these guys and, and uh, talk us through your emotions right now. Well, I'm, I'm extremely proud of them. And I think that, you know, I told them this in the locker room after the game because of what they've went through this year as players from an adversity standpoint, I think that they have an advantage on everybody that they walk amongst for the rest of their lives. I truly believe that because of what they had to face, what they had to go through. Uh, they they definitely have an advantage on some other folks uh, when they get out into the real world. Um, I think, you know, what we were able to do from a basketball standpoint is a, is a tribute to our leadership in the locker room. Uh, it could have very easily went south and crumbled up and, and thrown in the trash can in a hurry. But our, our seniors and our leaders in the locker room refused to let that happen. We continued to stay together. And uh, and because of that, uh, as we hit late February into early March, we really caught fire uh, with the way that we were we were scoring and defending. But you know, it's 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 about our leadership in the locker room. They, the, these guys were not going to allow us to ha to to do anything but end up right here in Rupp Arena. You all shot really well the entire game, especially the first half. Um, tell me about your game plan coming in and why it was successful for a long time. Well, um, you know, obviously the first portion offensively was of our game plan, excuse me, was to break their pressure. We knew that they were going to pressure us in the full court and we had to do something to make sure that, that, that they weren't turning us over. Um, and we kept race and uh, race the board Xander Carter up top, uh, splitting that pressure defense so we could get it across and once we did get the ball across, we wanted to make sure that we had great spacing because if we had good spacing, we could attack some gaps and it would open up the three-point line for us a little bit. And uh, we had some really good looks in the first half. We, I think we were shooting plus 40% at half, and there were still some really good looks that that didn't fall. And this was also a game that we knew going into that we were going to have to we were going to have to make shots to to be in it. Uh, that was a huge point of emphasis. I think. I mean, once you get here to the Sweet 16, you're going to have to hit some shots uh, to stay in the ball game. But uh, these guys were fully bought into the game plan. I thought they executed it really well. I thought we took care of the ball better tonight um than than what we did against Owensboro in all honesty. So they cleaned that portion of their game up uh, going into today. Just too many empty possessions. Order. Coach, we talked Monday about uh the togetherness of this team and how the outside noise and everything else kind of brought this team together. Could you talk a little bit about how that togetherness kept this team, you know, in its Thursday night, which they trailed most of, of that fourth quarter to come back and win that, and then to keep you all within striking distance with the number one team in the state today. Yeah, and I mean, it, these guys are, you know, we talk about togetherness. You, when you watch these guys interact with each other, even off the floor, there it's all smiles, it's all high fives, pats on the back. It's, it's a lot of positive encouragement, and I think that always leads to good things. And then as far as on the court, they're just gritty and they're tough. And and I saw it in their eyes in those those final timeouts of that Owensboro game. I saw the look in their eyes that they were not going to walk off that floor without a W. And, um, and you know, they just fought. They, and, again, they're a gritty bunch, and, and I think that's who we are as, as Ashland Tomcats. Uh, we're going to fight to the last horn, and uh, that's, that's never going to change, and that's not going to waver. For the players, um, you ready to have this guy back? Take the interim tag off and him be full time coach? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh just everything he does for us, you know, not even just on the floor, being a great coach is far from a game prep to to being on the floor, making game time decisions. Just <clears throat> the the relationship we have with him off the floor is something special. And uh I'd I'd be I'd be pleased to have him as another another year, another few years of it as a head coach while I'm here. Um, I mean, this was my, this was my last year here, but, um, he's hands down one of the best coaches that I've ever had while I was throughout my whole life playing basketball. And, um, yeah, I would love to, I would love to see him come back and be able to coach these, the, my players, um, for another year for even for many more years, because he's, he's a really good coach and I, I love him. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to have coach Bonner back. I mean, he's a great guy, you know, like, uh, Xander said, we have a great relationship with this, with this guy off the court also. And, uh, you know, being an Ashland alum, I mean, he knows our program well and he really cares for us. And I mean, he's just, he's a great coach and he's, he's 
definitely shown that he can run this program just as good as anybody else can. Could you talk about the challenges of defending them and trying to pick your poison, to kind of what they do? Yeah, they, it was tough. It was tough. They, I think they were shooting close to forty percent from three as a team going into the going into tonight. So we knew that their, their potency from the three point line. They also push with tempo and transition, and they also have guys that can finish at the rim and attack. Um, you know, the Kate Unsel kid is a guy that can they can step out and hit a shot off a pull up but he can also play with his back to the basket according to whatever matchup he has. So, you you know, we explained to our guys, we're going to go into this game trying our best to protect the paint and what we give up after. I mean, if, we, if, they, if they hit shots, they hit shots. But we felt like protecting the paint uh, would allow us to, to maintain some good rebounding position. Um, which, uh, you, you know, didn't didn't necessarily go in our favor the whole game. But, you know, they they have so many different ways that they can score the basketball. And on top of that, they can pressure you in the full court. So if they're not hitting shots, well, they'll just go take it from you and score it. So it's it's a it's they're they're a tough feat They're I really, truly think they're the best team here. Um, uh, they're extremely, they have extreme depth. They play eight, nine guys and all those guys could start pretty much everywhere in my opinion. Uh, so we knew, we knew the challenge that we had going into this game, but, uh, I thought our guys battled. I thought they fought extremely hard, uh, to the final seconds. And, uh, you know, I, I wish them the best of luck moving forward in this tournament. I know they have the capability to do something special. Coach Bonner, congratulations to you and to Ashlyn Blazer, Tomcats on a great season. Thank you. Thanks guys. Watch your step.